In this video we will create DAS morphs using the diffeomorphic add-on for both DAS and Blender. In this tutorial we're going to discuss a new workflow for creating DAS Studio morphs in Blender. It will open the door to a better understanding of how to make the DAS Studio character that you created look more like you envisioned when you animate it. This can be a tricky step in making a quality animation of, let's say, a famous person that you sculpted, which is why we almost never really see the cool celebrity likeness 3D models that we find on the web animated. If you could create new morphs during the process of animation, that would make this step less tricky. This video will teach you how to do that. First, we install Diffeomorphic add-on for both DAS Studio and Blender. First, you download the Morph Tutorial folder at the link in the description and extract it to your desktop. Then you take the Diffeomorphic folder that is inside the Morph Tutorial folder And you copy that over into your DAS library. Mine is called Public DAS Library, but you should be familiar with your DAS library. Make sure to copy it into your scripts folder. Now we go back into the Morph Tutorial folder and see this is the Blender add-on we'll be installing now for Diffeomorphic. So we open up Blender. Now so you know, uh, Diffeomorphic is a tool, a link between Blender and DAS Studio. The best in my opinion because you can import animations with it. Now go into Preferences. And then go into Add-ons. And Install. Then navigate to your desktop folder and then navigate to the Morph Tutorial folder. Go inside that folder, select the Diffeomorphic add-on, and then click the Install button. You'll see it pop up in the list. Click the little checkbox there, and then go down to the bottom left and save your preferences. Then close out the Preferences window, and now here, we have the Diffeomorphic add-on in the end panel in Blender. Now we open up DAS Studio. And inside DAS Studio, once we're in there, we go to the Smart Content tab. And once we're in the Smart Content tab, we click on Figures. And then we just scroll down until we see Genesis 8 Starter Essentials right here. And then we click on Figures. And then in the right hand pane we select either Genesis 8 Basic Female or Male. And then we go into your Scene tab and click the little triangle next to Genesis 8 female, delete the Genesis 8 female eyelashes. We don't need them to do this. Select your Genesis 8 female, go into mesh resolution, turn high resolution down to base like I'm doing, and turn subdivision level all the way down for viewport and for render. Now save the file to your desktop. I have a default file on my desktop where I save all my scratch files called scratch. It saves me having to type a file name when I'm working on a quick project like this. Choose accept to accept those options. Go to your content library and go into your library minus public DAS library where I saved the Diffeomorphic scripts. We saved them in the scripts folder, so scroll down to find scripts, click on it. 
scroll down to diffeomorphic and in there you want to click the setup menus button that's going to add diffeomorphic export to your file menu now accept all the options i have to accept a couple more because i already had the entries in my file menu go up to file choose export to blender and then save this file to your desktop it will be named automatically just like the file you just saved that you're in so mine is scratch.dbz dbz is a file extension used by diffeomorphic and choose ok now back in blender we click on the easy import DAS button on the diffeomorphic panel we scroll down on our desktop to the scratch.duf file and select that, not the scratch.dbz file. Then in the panel to the right, select all the things I'm selecting. Face units, expressions, visemes, facts, and facts expressions, and body. These will help us create our morph. And click the easy import DAS button. Now I sped this next section uh, up a little bit because it does take a while to import these things, maybe a couple minutes to import all those things that we selected extra. Normally it doesn't take that long, but um, we'll be back in a second. <laughs> Now here we got a DAS importer error. Here it doesn't matter because it's just something weird I had in DAS. The character came through okay. But if it does happen to you, if your character doesn't come through right, all you got to do is this. You just go up here to global settings on your diffeomorphic tab. Take note of this path. This path is important. Click OK. Then travel to this path. Mine is in my documents folder, but go here to this path in Windows Explorer. And there and there you'll find the errors file that you could look at if there's any issue. See mine, there's nothing. Just a couple things I had installed weird in DAS. No problem at all. Now we're sculpting a rigged character and uh, that's going to save some button clicks because at different times in your workflow uh, it's going to help to be able um, to have this extra option where you could just rip the uh, mesh and send it back to DAS Studio uh, and create a morph in DAS Studio and maybe bring it back into Blender with Diffeomorphic. Now here we go, I'm going to hide the rig to make this easier with H on your keyboard. Select the rig and hit H. Now we're going to use all these morph sliders at the bottom of the diffeomorphic panel to um, do our morph sculpt. So this is other stuff, you could use Daz's inbuilt tools to do this part of the process that was normally just done using Blender. Now we select our mesh and to add on to it, uh, we're going to select the mesh and then uh, we're going to go into sculpt mode um, and add to this. We're going to refine what we just did in Blender's way now instead of uh, using completely Daz's way. So you could use both tools, which is the method I came up with. There are many ways that I could think of how to use this. Uh, one is when you're trying to make a character look like a, a famous person. Uh, sometimes after you, uh, when you try and animate the sculpt that you made that looks like the famous person, the animation doesn't look good. And having a rigged character that you could have all these new options with will make it way easier to, uh, I feel, to uh, master that part of animating the character to make it look like 
uh, how the uh, famous person that you sculpted uh, maybe in Daz or in Blender and brought into Daz as a morph uh, to, to make the animation look correctly. Because, um, you know, a lot of people don't really do that. I think because they get that to that point in the process and uh, even though they sculpted the face to look like the famous person, uh, the animation just doesn't play out. I do apologize for the trains and stuff. I kind of, I live in San Diego and, you know, sometimes that happens, but... Uh Here's an example of what I'm talking about. It is an animation of Courtney Cox from the sitcom Friends. It's a video of her saying a quick vocal snippet from the show. I looped it a few times so you could get a real sense of what I'm talking about. Why would someone do that? 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 I made it before I developed this method. And that's why I developed this method. To see if I could improve upon my workflow in this area. See how the mouth and the face is close to how she actually looks, but it doesn't match her exactly? I will improve that with this method, and I'll make a sequel to this video when I do. I'll post a link to it in the description so you could find it easy. Anyways, uh, there's a myriad of ways you could use this, but uh, I'm just doing a quick sculpt here, and uh, then I'm going to bring it back into DAS Studio, and you, you can see that both these new methods uh, using Diffeomorphic do work, and uh, this is kind of an awesome and fun new way to add to your workflow. You save a bunch of button clicks, and it's just nicer, and it's a revised way of the way it's normally done. So now we save the file. We use Wavefront OBJ Legacy export, then Wavefront OBJ Legacy, because we need some options that are in here. And you just copy my settings exactly. Uh, I'm choosing to export as my scratch OBJ file, which is how I normally uh, export a quick item when I'm just doing scratch work. That way I don't have to type in file names ever. But I'm exporting as a scratch OBJ. And uh, I'm going to use my DAS preset, but if you just copy all these settings exactly like I have them, uh, everything's default except the uh, scale I set to 100. Normally that's at 1. Um, but everything is default blender until you get down to the geometry tab. And then uh, you have to copy these settings exactly. I'm going to go slowly over this part uh, so you could uh, have time to set all these settings exactly like mine. Um, the main most important one is to have, uh, I think... Uh, vertex groups and poly groups selected at the bottom now back in DAS studio we go to edit menu and then uh, we click on figures there it is and then more floater pro and then we make sure the DAS studio preset is selected if you don't have it selected then click on choose more files go to your desktop find that scratch obj or whatever you name the file as then click to open it then click accept then if everything went good you'll see morph created successfully as long as you followed my instructions it um, should have been created successfully because this works. I've tried it many times. Then we select our Genesis 8 female, go back into the uh, parameters tabs, and scroll down to you see morphs. Click the little triangle. Or no, you don't have to click that. But anyways, uh, there's our scratch morph right there. And we could change it and see that this does work using both methods and using diffeomorphic on a rigged character. So we can use uh, Daz's inbuilt morphs to create our own brand new morphs. In Blender, using Diffeomorphic. Yeah, just kind of dialing it in there. Um, 
Now to check it out in eye ray mode, see how good it looks. Yeah, and we created a pretty good morph using a uh, pretty good expression morph using uh, diffeomorphic. So if you like, uh, like this video, please subscribe for more. If you want to see uh, more on this, uh, keep checking back. I'll uh, post links in the description of this video. Uh, if I make an addendum to this video, which I probably will as soon as I figure out how to animate famous people that I've sculpted. So keep checking back.